Now that we've reviewed how waves of depolarization spread across tissue to affect ECG recordings, and we've reviewed the overall electrical flow of a sinus rhythm in the heart, now it's time to review the basic components of the ECG in a single lead. So what you see in front of you is a single lead electrocardiogram in a patient with normal sinus rhythm. The P wave is the start of a normal sinus rhythm. The P wave represents electrical depolarization that emanates from the sinus node and spreads throughout the atria, usually from the right atrium to the left atrium, because the sinoatrial node is in the right atrium. The best leads to visualize a P wave are lead 2, because it points in the direction of the wave of depolarization of the heart, and lead V1, because V1 is an anterior lead, and the sinoatrial node is an anterior structure. If the patient is in normal sinus rhythm, then the P wave of the atria precedes the QRS wave generated by the ventricles. A normal P wave should be less than 2.5 millimeters in height in your limb leads, and the duration should be less than 0.12 seconds, or three little boxes, in duration. So the QRS wave represents the ventricular response to the atrial signal, or ventricular depolarization. The QRS is a high voltage wave with most commonly three components. The Q wave is the first downward deflection and usually is a small voltage. Next is the R wave, which is a tall upward deflection that is usually higher in voltage in most leads. Finally, the S wave is a downward deflection that occurs after the R wave. The example shown here is of course an oversimplification because there are many variations on the QRS shape, which is also called the morphology. For example, the Q wave may be difficult to visualize, or in a patient with myocardial infarction, they actually may have a very prominent Q wave in certain leads. Later, we'll see an example of an RSR prime wave, which occurs in right bundle branch block, in which there's a primary R wave, an S wave, and then a secondary R prime wave. The bottom line is that the QRS may have different shapes or morphologies, but the underlying theme is a higher voltage wave representing ventricular depolarization. Finally, here's the T wave. The T wave follows the QRS and represents ventricular repolarization. The T wave is usually positive in almost all leads. Students often ask, why is the T wave positive? Well, if you think about it, you have two things going on that are different than depolarization. First, you have an opposite change in your charge because the heart is repolarizing. And then you have an opposite direction of the wavefront from depolarization. So the cross product of two negatives is a positive, and this is seen as a positive deflection on the ECG. If you have an inverted T wave, that might represent myocardial ischemia, and we'll go into more detail in that later. Now, a little word on intervals. So an interval is a period of time in the cardiac cycle that has a physiologic meaning and then it involves at least one deflection on the EKG. So it can either be an increase or a decrease in voltage. An example of an interval is the PR interval, which represents the time that it takes for an atrial impulse to reach the ventricles. Prolongation of the PR interval, so for example, over one big box or 200 milliseconds, prolongation of the PR interval may represent atrial conduction system disease because it takes a long time for electrical impulses to travel across from the atrium to the ventricle. On the other hand, a short PR interval means that the AV node is either slick and rapidly conducts, or that there could potentially be another electrical connection from the atrium to the ventricle. For example, a muscular accessory pathway, or Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. The QRS interval represents the time it takes to depolarize the ventricles. Prolonged QRS interval may represent a delay in electrical conduction in the ventricles, for example, in bundle branch block. We'll look at some examples of QRS widening later. The QT interval represents the time it takes to depolarize and then to repolarize the ventricles. In other words, this is the time it takes for the ventricles to fire and then reset. The QT interval is prolonged by environmental, genetic or medication related reasons and we'll discuss the implications of a long QT interval during one of our later case examples. So also there are segments on the ECG to be aware of. Segments are slightly different than intervals 
because segments don't necessarily involve the upward or downward deflections on the ECG. For example, a PR segment represents AV nodal conduction. On an ECG, we can't really see the electrical depolarization of the AV node well because the AV node is a small structure and it's also an insulated structure. And so the time after atrial depolarization, which is the time after the P wave, but before ventricular depolarization, i.e. the QRS, represents the quality of conduction and the speed of conduction through the AV node. Another important segment is the ST segment, which represents the electrical events between ventricular depolarization and repolarization. When a patient is experiencing a myocardial infarction or ischemia, usually the affected ventricular tissue begins to display alterations in the ST segment. When the ST segment is depressed or placed downward, this corresponds to ischemia. During ST segment elevation, this corresponds to a transmural or through the wall infarct of ventricular tissue. We will discuss this more later in the ischemia and MI section.